our hometown. This is Carney Live on 102.7 FM, our hometown radio station. Carney Live is presented by Carney Trust, 310 West 92 Highway in Carney, 816-628-6666. And now here's the hosts of Carney Live, Mike Davis and Jim Dickerson. Thank you. Thank you. That's our studio audience. Welcome to Carney Live. This is the station. In fact, this is the show, the very show that prefers donuts to dollars. Uh, proven just moments ago by a, uh, a focus group of one, Mr. Jim Dickerson, who indicated that, yes, he'll, he'll take the donut today over the dollar. So thank you, Jim, for that. Appreciate that. Going to have to go resolve that issue here before long. I know. I know. We're getting close to lunch. Would you have a donut for lunch? Uh, I absolutely would have <laughs> Why a donut not? for lunch. I know it. Hey, I did want to mention, too, that uh, in case people didn't know, Brian Watts, the producer, engineer, uh, show director, and general manager of this station, 102.7 FM, your hometown radio station here in Kearney, Missouri, is operating this board with such a level of dexterity now, I can't even begin to describe it. Yes, it's amazing. He is something to watch. He really is, and uh, Brian likes donuts, too. No doubt about that. Uh, we have today Mr. Jerry Nolte, the uh, commissioner here, the, uh, what, what do you say, Jerry? The, 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 the presiding. Thank you. I, words you were escaping me. Words are hard at my age among, uh, you know, it's just difficult to, to do more than a thing in a row uh, at, at my age. But uh, I'm managing. All right. It's okay. But uh, great to have you here with us, Jerry. Uh, Thank but, you very much. I, I was also promised donuts, and I'm, I'm, I'm still yeah, wondering about we, that. Uh, we're going to talk to Brian about that. I think so. Uh, before we get to Jerry, though, I wanted to uh, give a little shout out to all of our seniors out there who uh, are now well, graduating. Thank you, Jim. Now. Yeah, it's, it's great. I appreciate that. Not, yes, I, I'm a senior. No, I appreciate that. Let Thank me rephrase. You. I'd like to give a little shout out to the high school oh, oh, seniors oh, oh, that, that's, that are graduating. Oh, right. I know that you guys are going through a, uh, let's call it a weird time right now with all the stuff that's going on. So congratulations to the seniors um, who are graduating. And then um, we said this before last week, but we'll say it again this time. If you're going out, as things start to reopen, make sure you check either our Facebook page or the Chamber Facebook page because there are different rules and restrictions for places, but places all over are starting to open back up. So that's good to see, and uh, make sure you get out for those who can and patronize those local businesses. I know I have, and I know, uh, although I don't know that it's been confirmed where, immediately following today's show, we're going to patronize something because... I'm starving to death. <laughs> no doubt about that. Uh, and by the way, uh, Jerry, it, it would appear to me that you could use a haircut. Uh, I know I can. Uh, although yours looks good. I, I like what you got going. You're, you're covering it up with the headphones. But when you first came in here, uh, it reminds me of when we were uh, at Oak Park High School, circa 1973. And we all just sort of let our hair grow. It, it wasn't styled for, you know, in any particular way. We just let it grow. The and funny part about 1973, <laughs> that was uh, Mike's seventh year of high school. Yeah, well. And he was uh, doing really well back then. Absolutely so that was good. Right. So, yeah, uh, that going for you. But uh, there are actually, uh, I do know that the best little hair house in Holt is open uh, right now. If you'd like to get a haircut or a style or a massage, uh, or any number of uh, other sort of spa-like uh, services. Uh, wonderful place. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, can't, I am ready for a haircut. Let's just make this happen. Uh, I did also want to mention, Jim, that uh, we're, we're going to give something away here. you want to talk about that? Yeah, so uh, do you want to talk about it? Well, or do you I, want me to talk I, about I, it? I, I just, uh, well, I'll, I'll tell I, you what, Mike yeah. will explain the product. I'll tell you what you have to do to get the product, and you can win it for free. And now to tell you right. more about it is my Davis. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Yeah, thanks for the setup. I appreciate that. This, uh, this product right here is a Google Nest Mini. And, uh, I, you know, uh, I don't know, a month or two ago or maybe more, somebody had indicated they used the term smart speaker. And I thought, what the heck are you, what are you talking about? 
Well, this is a smart speaker. It is uh, very similar to other products uh, in, in which you, you can plug this thing into your house and you can ask it to do things. You can say, hey, Google, play 102.7 FM, and she does, and it's amazing. So you can listen to 102.7 FM if you got this thing plugged into your house. It runs off of Wi-Fi. You can turn your lights on with it. It's, a, it's just a thing of beauty. Uh, to, to many of you, this thing is, uh, there's nothing new about it uh, to some of us. Uh, we're still in, in, in a little bit of a state of awe. Oh, oh, you know. That would be older people like Mike, who exactly just right. recently Seniors. discovered electricity. Seniors. He sits at home and tries to figure out how to turn his computer on and off. But I um, rub two sticks together. To there make you that go. Happen. Right. As you know, we uh, we try to give away uh, things uh, here at the station, and we've actually given away a Google Nest or two before right. uh, to people right. who've called in. And and the promotion you, is Jim. I sorry to interrupt, but the promotion is all about uh, you can listen to this station anywhere on right. the, on the planet. Right. right. And uh, so that's yeah, that's part of the promotion. So. And you can listen to, you've probably heard the commercials that we have here where, you know, say Google Play 102.7 and it turns on the radio station. So, and you can listen, as we've said, you can listen to the station anywhere in the world. If you remember back to last year's football season as well, we always tried to give away, in uh, conjunction with the school district, we gave away some premium seats to the football games um, to people in Kearney who were deserving of that. And we'd like to continue that tradition with this google nest exactly so for this one that we're giving away um what we thought we would do is if you will uh, text in i'm sorry send in someone who you think is deserving of the google nest and we'll give it away on friday brian will announce that on his friday morning show but put it on this program's facebook uh it's on facebook live now but it'll be rebroadcast in the comments section Type in who you think should be deserving and why in two sentences or less. In other words, don't give a four-hour diatribe of who you think would be uh, deserving or who you think should be a Google Nest winner. Maybe it's a police officer. Maybe it's a firefighter. Maybe, maybe it's, it's a, a teacher. Nurse, maybe it's a teacher. Maybe, maybe it's a it's, coach. Maybe it's just someone who it, did something in the community that no one else has recognized or you don't think they've recognized. So, Like a barber. A, a barber would be a good one. <laughs> He's um, been doing absolutely nothing. But there are so many people in this community who have done so many things. Right. Um, so we're just trying, and I realize a Google Nest isn't going to be the end all be all, but we're just trying to help out where we can. So if you'll put that in your, um, in the comment section below and then listen to Brian's show on Friday, he will actually announce the winner and give away that Google Nest, uh, to some lucky winner. And we've been giving those away and this probably won't be the last one, but it's the one that's going out on Friday. Right. And, uh, I think once you sort of sit down and plug the thing in and start, you know, getting it programmed to do the things you want it to do, you become uh, somewhat dependent on it. So in just full disclosure, Brian or uh, Mike has a Google Nest right. and he uses it to turn on his lights and open his door and remind him to get up in the morning and all that weird stuff. Yeah, my dogs do that. Um, I don't have a Google Nest at home. So, I'd like to win. I've provided a short list of things that I've done over my uh, accomplishments, and um, it's no. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm oh, here. We go with that again. I wish that thing would break. Um, Stop boring us, then. <laughs> but uh, people who work at the radio station or any of its subsidiaries are not eligible to win. Your story grows tiresome. It does. So with that, Mike, back to you, uh, Jerry. Uh, Jerry Nolte. Uh, presiding commissioner clay county uh, welcome to the show and, thank you yeah uh, sorry you had to sit through all that no actually i'm glad he did. I, you're la i could see you were laughing and smiling and having a good time with that's because he's a politician he's trying to be <laughs> he's trying is. to be nice yep yep uh, I've, I've, I've known you guys for a while especially mike so uh, there, there's a lot of inside humor there that i can pick up on and no doubt about it mm -hmm. and uh yes jerry I, I think i introduced you one time at uh it was a fundraiser and yes. i said this in case some of you didn't know, Jerry's actually a really funny guy, and uh, you are. So, uh, you know, don't hold back, please, even on this show. I'll tear loose. Uh, but what, how, did, just as a, before we get into anything of real substance, how have you guys been holding out through this whole situation? Uh, 
fortunately, we have a, a good sized backyard, and I spend time back there uh, moving piles of gravel from one spot to another. I, that's sort of my wife's uh, assignment for me. So <laughs> sounds like uh, an army like, sergeant. Yeah, I was say, <laughs> dig a hole now, fill the hole. <laughs> Well, the the, the uh, apropos response is, thank you, ma'am. May I have another? Exactly. <laughs> yes. So, but uh, has it made it, has it, I'm sure it has, how's it uh, headed to the challenge of, of uh, you know, trying to do work stuff, you're trying to do it at home and... It's uh, it, it's interesting in that a lot of the meetings that I would be going to are now on Zoom or some other application like that, so... Um, you know, I, my wardrobe uh, from the waist up is, is still spot on. Uh, the rest of it is catch as catch can. Yep. Nice. Well, the, right. there's a lot of people that are under the misconception that even when I come in here to the studio, I'm wearing pants. I mean, clearly for you oh guys God. that are in here know that I'm pa- not. Pants are optional in the, in the studio. So, yeah. Uh, where was that door again? Where I <laughs> right, exactly. Um, are, are we ready for something serious here or not? I don't I This is kind of fun. Um so, Jerry, a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, what's today, the 12th or 13th of May, uh, an email came across my desk that I was copied on because it was, uh, it actually came from Nicole Brown, and she had indicated that uh, you, as the presiding commissioner, had to, uh, you, you were required to sign for the federal funding certification uh, money, which was a disbursement, uh, presumably here, uh, or going to disperse, $29.3 million to Clay County. And uh, she was, uh, let's just say, emphatic about getting you back to sign for that. And uh, as I read further through the letter, it gave the impression that if you didn't sign for it that particular day, then the county was, uh, let's just say, fresh out of luck uh, on the money. And uh, you indicated to me just moments ago before we went on the air that the $29.3 million is uh, is still uh, can still go to Clay County. Uh, that's as much as I know about this thing, but there was a, a good deal of panic surrounding this whole thing. Uh, so bring us up to speed. Well, where do we stand on this? Of course. Um, the, uh, the resolution that we passed uh, on a two-to-one vote, uh, I was in dissent, but it did have provisions to disperse that money. Uh, part of it was that we would uh, also have to submit the federal certification Um what I ended up doing was I put an amendment on that certification because I didn't feel like our resolution had the had, had sufficient protections for the people of Clay County because we essentially, the way it was written, we were on the hook for that whole 29.3 if it did not get spent properly, and that is a pile of money. And who determines how it's spent properly? That's the part that puzzles me. Sure. There are federal guidelines that are attached, so in, involved in that are the different areas. One of the things that it may not be used for, and that is revenue replacement, so if you know when we experience the reductions in sales taxes and the others we're not allowed to use that money to replace those revenues that would be that's probably going to be a future uh, uh action by the federal government to to cover that particular usage but but it's pretty specific on what it could and could not be used for but we as a, a county we're responsible to the state uh, and to the federal government with to provide documentation and any incorrectly spent money inappropriately spent money would have to be made up by the county without any uh, hold harmless uh, with the municipality. So that's, that's kind of where it started. Mm -hmm. I sent that in. That was uh, not accepted. Uh, I used the interim time as it was being considered to reach out to the cities, explain to them my apprehensions. And I've got to tell you the, the, all the municipal municipalities in, uh, in Clay County, Kansas city accepted because they have a separate arrangement rose to the occasion. I talked to the, to the mayor here in Kearney and um, I explained to him what my concerns were and what I thought a possible solution was. We sat down, we worked through it together with with the other cities, and we came up with a solution I think that we could all be happy with. And at that point, I felt like I could sign that because the Clay County taxpayers were being protected to, to that extent. And that's one of the things I wanted to make sure that people understood is that all that money wasn't or still isn't going to Clay County proper. It's being dispersed across a number of cities and all that sort of thing. So, what are the the restrictions, the limitations that the cities have once they get the money? Well, their restrictions are essentially the same as the federal ones. They have they had uh, similar paperwork that that came to them, and then they have the actual you know restrictions on what it, it has to be spent basically on COVID nineteen related expenses that are unbudgeted. So, if you budgeted um, 
$1,000 for gloves, for, for rubber gloves, mm -hmm. um, that would not be covered. But if you spent, say, 2000 on rubber gloves, the additional money that was not originally budgeted would be a covered expense. So that's kind of a basic example of what would be covered. So, right. what it, so yeah, th so it's got it's got the provision in it um, pretty much, and we've heard a lot about this from a national level, that if you have a budget shortfall that was a budget shortfall before this ever happened, you cannot use this to cover your bo budget shortfalls that you you brought on yourself last year or something like that. Well, no, that's correct, but it also is is it's looking forward too. So when we when we get the inevitable drop in sales taxes that we will experience like every other government, mm -hmm. we cannot use that money to make up that gap. That would be a separate allocation coming from the federal government. This can only be used for expenses related to COVID-19. And there's also a provision under Section 5 um, that allows uh, some assistance to go to, to uh, businesses. I would hope specifically small businesses to get them right. over the hump, so I would agree. But those are all things that are are in there and are able to be a uh, to be accessed by these local governments, and that's really a great place for it to be because um, I like to think I, I I'm familiar with Carney, but I am not as familiar with Carney as as the mayor here. I'm not right. as familiar with Liberty as the mayor there, mm -hmm. and they are close to the needs. And I think this speaks to a an increased partnership between the county and the uh, cities that I think needs to be expanded. Uh, I, I'm I'm curious then, um, as cities and, and it, it, people in Clay County get this money, uh, is there some audit that follows up after this, or how, how do how do we people know you know how this money is being spent? How, sure. how do you monitor that? There there will be a reckoning. Uh, not too surprisingly, mm -hmm. the uh, the other one of the other parameters of spending this money it has to be between March I think March 30 mm -hmm. and December 30. So it has to be expenses that were incurred during that period so you could incur an expense on say december 29th and it would still be covered so the accounting of it is going to be in the first quarter of 2021 and that would be my guess would be it may well be the uh, state auditor who would do the actual on the ground auditing but i'm not sure i'm not really clear on on who would be doing that but mm -hmm. um I, I feel like we need to assume that it is going to be audited very scrupulously yeah, I, I would imagine. As it should be. Yeah, I, and I'm curious about the amount. I mean, I just, uh, $29.3 million doesn't sound random to me. It, I, it, any reason for that particular number? It is It is essentially a uh, population function. Oh, I see. Okay. Which, um, I mean, that's, that's and, and when it was distributed through 2021-39, the resolution the county passed, that was, again, distributed strictly on population. My preference would have been to have have put in a factor for need because it's possible, especially going forward mm -hmm. that, um, that, uh, you know, Carney may be hit, you know, in a second wave more severely. And I think it would have been a good idea if we would had some latitude to, to give more to Carney than someone who is, who is not suffering as, as harshly under these conditions. So right. I, I think the idea of being able to, um, to bring help into hot spots, I think is something that we should have reserved in, in this, uh, resolution. When you dissented on the original vote uh, with the other two commissioners, um, I, I got the sense there was a fiduciary reason for that. I mean, this isn't political. Uh, I don't think. No, so, I mean it. It. I mean uh, it, it. It. It was in, entirely a fiduciary uh, function that that I was trying to perform. Okay. Okay. And that was two things. That was the accountability mm -hmm. portion of it, which I just spoke to. Right. And then the other was what, what I'd mentioned before was the ability to monitor it um the i i had put my own proposal forward mm -hmm. and that would have been involving uh the entities the cities and, and the others to come forward and say we spent this much money on ppes uh we need to be reimbursed and that way we could as it was going along we would have a, a sort of real-time right. auditing function to that money going out i just want to make that clear that that this is not political i think it's easy to when you see especially when you, i get an email like this that you, you think Wow, Jerry's really going out here and uh, making a political statement and uh, sticking a flag in the ground here. And, and what's up with that? You know. Well, the thing is, it is, and I, I like the idea uh, to be able to think in terms of people wanting to do the right thing. Um, one of my favorite political quotes, and I don't know if it's necessarily political, is from um, uh, Alexander Hamilton, actually. Uh, no, excuse me, Thomas Jefferson speaking at Hamilton's funeral, he said that Jefferson had the capacity to, while disagreeing with someone, 
to believe that that person was holding their views as sincerely as he held his own. And I think that is, uh, that is something that is probably not very well represented right down Clay County. And I would like to see us adopt more of. Right. Right. Yeah. And no, I was going to bring that up because, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into this a little bit after the break. We got to, do a break here. Take us to break, Jim. And uh, while before we go to break, just remember that Google Nest is out there. Put your uh, comments below in the Facebook section of who you think should win the Google Nest. We'll be back with more from Jerry Nolte right after this. Making our programming possible on KPGZ are these fine underwriters. Simplify your banking, simplify your life. It's easy with Kearney Trust Company. The world has become fast-paced, and we understand that you are busy. That's why we offer a banking experience that's as simple and stress-free as can be. Carney Trust goes beyond convenient locations and good customer care to offer banking services that make managing your finances quicker and easier than ever before. Online, bill pay, e-statements, and mobile banking are available to give you a positive banking experience so you can get back to your life and activities. Carney Trust also provides capital to people and businesses so they can achieve their goals. Whether you know exactly what you want or just need someone to talk to about your dream, you can speak with them and work on that dream. You may just be getting off the ground or ready to move into your brick and mortar building. Carney Trust will provide you and your business with the resources you need to succeed. Carney Trust Company is your partner for success with two convenient locations in Carney at 310 West 92 Highway and 701 Watson Drive in Price Chopper. The phone is 816-628-6666. Carney Trust Company, banking you can trust. Member FDIC. Welcome back. Welcome back to Carney Live. We've got Jerry Nolte, the presiding commissioner of Clay County, in with us today. And we're talking about all manner of federal funding uh, that uh, uh, that Clay County and many other counties are, uh, are they, that they are likely going to get here on because of the COVID-19 situation. And uh, Jerry, you had mentioned uh, when we were just a little while ago while we were off the air. Uh, that you wanted to get Kansas City involved in, uh, I guess, the sort of overseeing this this money in, in, in some capacity? or Right. E- explain to me what, what you were just telling us a minute ago. There was uh, an arrangement for Kansas City to basically sign a, a memorandum of understanding which would hold the county ha- harmless as far as any, uh, any expenditures that were not covered under the guidelines. So they accidentally, you know, spent something that was not... <clears throat> excuse me, that was not in the, uh, un- under the guidelines. Uh, it would be between the city of Kansas city and the state and ca- and federal governments. Um, that was contingent on Kansas city getting $15.8 million, um, in the, in uh, 2020, 139, the county resolution, they in fact got something on the order of 11.6. Um, so that is a relatively, that that's something that's kind of come up and the, the idea that we would, that the taxpayers would be held harmless uh, is now not on the board like it was before. So uh, I have a resolution coming out uh, Monday that I would like to discuss with the other commissioners and hopefully pass that would put Kansas City under the same accountability rules. I see. Uh, to where they would, um, essentially, they're, they're, they would, if they don't, that they would pass the same language that the other cities had passed mm-hmm. and that would, you know, it, that would make that, uh, that better. Uh, or they had to present us with a memorandum of understanding that would, um, that would then, you know, keep us harmless. Right. Or on the third option would be we go back to they come to us with receipts. We we evaluate the receipts and we reimburse based on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other issue with Kansas City is uh, obviously it's the large largest city in in Clay County, um, and they straddle several different counties. One of the concerns is that when when uh, the city of Kansas City gets their funding portion, that it be spent 
on citizens, Kent City citizens within Clay County. So another provision would basically say that the money has to be spent in Clay, in, in Clay County, Kansas City. Uh, the exceptions would be shared costs. So, I mean, if you're talking about, you know, the structure for the police, that kind of a thing, I understand that that's different. And also materials. So if they were, if they were going to buy, again, surgical gloves, they could do that. They would have to buy them in Clay County, but they would have to be used in Clay County. So I was trying to give them some latitude, but yeah. make sure that the majority of the money was spent on Clay County citizens because otherwise they get left out. Well, and that was a question I was going to bring up because they, they compass four counties, five, I think if you want to count, there's a little sliver that's a, but let's, uh, Clay, Platt, Jackson and Cass, um, how do you, that is a, a huge undertaking because clearly, so does Jackson County, Cass County and Platt County, are they all going to have a similar cares, um, package given to them? Good question. And then, you know, as a, just it, when you look at budgeting, uh, through the city of Kansas City, the majority of their budget always ends up in the Jackson County area. So, and you may not know the answer to this, but does Jackson County have a huge sum that's going to uh, Kansas City as well? Yes, Jackson County, uh, as pointed out, the Clay County uh, portion based on population is 29.3. The um, the Jackson County is something in the order of 123 million, and then there's okay. Platt, there's Platt County then, right? And right. Platt County also has is, is somewhat lesser because they have, have around 100,000 people over there. But as far as what all the other counties are doing, um, they a lot most of the other counties are doing kind of what I outlined in my alternative that I would like to have passed, and that was the cities and the other entities would be submitting uh, their application their their documentation saying, yes, we did spend this money on budget that was not budgeted on COVID-19 related mm -hmm. expenses. Um, I believe that's the way the other counties are working. Jackson County, I'm not quite so uh, up to speed on, but I'm pretty sure that's the way Platt is working. The other thing that I wanted to put in place was to have a citizen, uh, citizen elected official review committee to where you would have roughly half citizens, half elected officials who would be going through the, uh, the expenses that were submitted and then giving their recommendations to the commission who would then say yes or no on spending that money. So I, I wanted to have that layer of transparency to where regular citizens could come in, take a look at this and say, yeah, that makes sense. Or, yeah, this doesn't pass the smell test. So who, is there a, a, a time limit on, I guess there has to be, if you are one of these people who, or groups or organizations who says, you know, we, we, we did lose this much money and we'd like to apply for, uh, you know, $2,500 or more. Mm -hmm. uh, when is there a deadline for that? Uh, when, when is that the request deadline? When does it start? When does it stop? The, um, the thing is what's written in the uh, resolution that did pass uh, that I voted against basically talks about one time disbursements. And that was another thing that I had concerns about was uh, that essentially, you know, a check would be written to whatever entity, whether a city or whatever. And I thought it was, I, I thought just giving them their money and, and, and it didn't allow us to be able to adapt to an evolving situation because right. I don't think I, I, I don't think there's anyone who doesn't feel there's going to be some sort of a reoccurrence uh, when we get into the fall and to have the, the flexibility to be able to um, to be able to help out in hot spots I think is something mm -hmm. that we have unfortunately denied ourselves. Well, that kind of answers my question about whether you think. I mean, I'm, I'm speculating here, but $29.3 million seems like a lot of money, but I guess it's not a lot when you think that it's going to this large area of Clay County. Uh, would there, is there a chance any of this would be left over? Is that just a foolish question? Uh, no, that, that, that has been accounted for both mm -hmm. in, the, um, in the legislation that came down to us from the state and federal governments and in, in 139, which, uh, you know, they're, they're, it's not... There are good points in 139, and one of them is it is the voluntary return of, of monies in October uh, that are unexpended, but they're supposed to uh, to give back any unexpended uh, monies by the end of the period, by you know after uh, December 30, if it's not been incurred. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that that's, that's the thing is it's um, it's a little bit too much left to chance, and it's not a matter of of trust; it's just a matter of, of accountability. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a matter of being able to say, yes, this money was spent correctly, and, and we can certify that. And like I said, the, the, the municipalities uh, throughout Clay County 
I mean, I can't, I can't talk enough about how much uh, respect I have for those, uh, those entities because they came up to the plate when I expressed my concerns and we sat down and we reasoned it out together and came up with a solution that we could all live with. Um, I felt so strongly about it. I went ahead and did the certification prior to some of the municipalities passing it because, you know, quite honestly, if, if, if the mayor here in Kearney says, I will do X, I believe he will do X. Uh, and I, I don't think, uh, I don't think there's really, I don't think there's hardly any chance at all that he would not follow through on his commitment because I know him and I know he's an honorable person. Mm -hmm. Same with all the other mayors throughout, uh, throughout the, the city here, or excuse me, throughout the county. So I felt really, you know, like I could take that leap of faith. And that, that was kind of a question I had. What is the penalty, or is there any, or has it even been discussed, if someone uses the money in a way they're not supposed to? In other words, they sure. violate. I mean, it's pretty, I know they, the, the federal government, and they had to kind of rush to get this stuff just to get the money out there. So there are certain things that they just didn't think of or whatever. It's like anything else. When you're rushed into something and it's never been done before and you need to get it out quick, I understand you, you're probably going to miss something. And the complications and the intricacies of this thing are so huge. But is there anything out there or what's the provision if you do clearly and i'm not talking about a mistake oh we thought that would be covered or and it wasn't i'm talking about a blatant we're trying to cover up uh for a financial shortfall we had long before this ever happened well first off i want to talk to your point about the uh the rushed nature of it because you're right that is something that i think um i think the expedience has uh, has cost it, as far as accountability goes all the way up and down the line um my concern again with the uh, resolution we passed on May 1st was it was not necessary to pass it on May 1st. We could have passed it on May 18th coming up. We could have passed it on June 1st. We could have passed it. We could pass it on June 15th. That money was safe because it was, because it was appropriated and earmarked in the budget. So, so throughout the budget year of the state, it was safe money. Um, and one of the functions of hurrying it of the undue haste that I think is, is exactly that is the penalties. And, uh, I mean, the penalty mainly is just return the money. Um, and I don't mind that so much because it's, you know, if, if money was spent incorrectly, it's, I'm not sure it does as much good at this point to, um, to just start assigning blame. Uh, sometimes it's better just say, you know, if you say you made a mistake, well, we, we will go with that. Just give us the money back. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be a more but expedient. What if, what if they don't have it? Then, uh, then under prior to the uh, provisions that the st the cities are passing now, absent that in one thirty nine, the, the county eats it. So if there was a million dollars that was spent inappropriately throughout the county, uh, and we couldn't recover that money from the cities, um, I, I, you know, our option might be a lawsuit, which I, I don't think anybody wants to see that. Oh boy. Uh, but we would be, as a county, on the hook for it. And if we were not to repay that back, one of the options that is possible out there is when sales taxes are paid, it goes to the state, and then the state distributes it to the different political subdivisions, the, the county, the cities, all the, all the rest. Um, there's the distinct possibility they may hold on to that money and just say, gee, Clay County, you, we figure you owe us some money here, and we're just going to hold on to this uh, sales tax money for the moment. I mean, they, they, that's not explicitly there, but that is absolutely a positive possibility. Yeah, but it does show that you do need to be financially responsible fiscally for the money. And you, yes. you don't want to just go hog wild. And because I know, like Mike was talking about, when when this originally came out, um, and the way you know the way the the story was kind of told, it it you weren't hearing the full story and. If you were someone who doesn't follow this on a regular basis, it kind of looked like, you know, people were playing political games and right. um, that sort of thing. But th what I think people need to know is there is there is some responsibility that has to be put out there. And this is a lot of money. I mean, this isn't yeah. just like a gift. I mean, it, it, it it's to serve a purpose and it has a specific purpose. So, um, but one of the things I think, that played into it here is because in Clay County, we know if you follow the news, almost every vote that comes out of, out of the uh, county commission is two to one, two to one, two to one. Um, and so I think a lot of people were like, well, this is no different. So, um, well, one of the issues that, uh, that also prompted me to vote no on this, 
uh, was the fact that I didn't feel like there was sufficient time for me to review. We're talking. We're not talking about, uh, you know, uh, naming. Uh, you know, May twenty seventh, a uh, cute kitten day. This is. This has got financial impact on it. And one of the uh, did that pass by the way. <laughs> I'll talk about that one later. Um, but one of the issues was I. I got the actual text of the resolution. Uh, it hit my email box at twelve thirty a.m. the day of the of the nine o'clock vote, and. I didn't feel as though that was sufficient time to review a document that put the county on the hook for ninety twenty nine point three million dollars. I right. and how many how many pages was it? Um, Roughly, about, I don't know, maybe. about twelve, I think, something like that. Okay. I've got it with me, but yeah, and a lot of it was like graphs and things like that. But still, you you but you've you got examine it, it. Yeah, you don't. I mean, you don't just make a twenty nine million dollar decision no. overnight, and especially in the middle of the night, right? And so, and so for for that reason, I mean, among the others, I couldn't vote on something that I had not done my due diligence on. So why did why were they pressing? Why were they pushing for such an urgent when time was not of a critical nature? In other words, you weren't going to lose the money if you didn't vote immediately. Why were they pushing so hard to get this thing to voted get, to on? get your signature? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a question I think you would have to pose to the people who who were who were pushing that. Um, I, uh, you know, like I said, I had had conversations, and and at the beginning of this process, I had contacted the state treasurer's office, and I had, I had disseminated my contact, uh, the, the initial person I contacted, that person's phone number, to uh, to staff, so that you know, contact them individually, get information that you want to. Obviously, I'm talking to them. We all need to be talking to them so that we can understand um, what the exact parameters are, and um, you know, it was it was made pretty clear to me at the beginning that the and then maybe this was a misunderstanding that the May 1st deadline had to do with just the first dist- distribution. Mm-hmm. Uh, following that, they could be distributed pretty much at any time without any endangerment of those assets, of those funds. We are visiting today with Jerry Nolte. He is the presiding commissioner of Clay County, Missouri, and uh, doing a darn fine job of it, if you ask me. Good to have you here, Jerry. Thank you. We're going to take a short break. Stay with us. We'll be right back on Carney Live. A special thank you going out to underwriters like these for their support of KPGZ. Simplify your banking, simplify your life. It's easy with Kearney Trust Company. The world has become fast-paced, and we understand that you are busy. That's why we offer a banking experience that's as simple and stress-free as can be. Kearney Trust goes beyond convenient locations and good customer care to offer banking services that make managing your finances quicker and easier than ever before. Online, bill pay, e-statements, and mobile banking are available to give you a positive banking experience so you can get back to your life and activities. Kearney Trust also provides capital to people and businesses so they can achieve their goals. Whether you know exactly what you want or just need someone to talk to about your dream, you can speak with them and work on that dream. You may just be getting off the ground or ready to move into your brick and mortar building. Kearney Trust will provide you and your business with the resources you need to succeed. Kearney Trust Company is your partner for success with two convenient locations in Kearney at 310 West 92 Highway and 701 Watson Drive in Price Chopper. The phone is 816-628-6666. Kearney Trust Company, banking you can trust. Member FDIC. And welcome back to Carney Live. We're talking with uh, Commissioner Jerry, presiding Commissioner Jerry Nolte. Don't forget, if you want to win, uh, register to win or register someone to win that Google Nest uh, smart speaker. Make sure you put your comments on Facebook Live or on the Facebook uh, video, this Facebook video of who you think would be a good recipient of that. We're going to give it away. Brian's going to give it away on his morning show on Friday, this Friday. And uh, two sentences or less, please. Don't put a seven-page diatribe about why somebody is so great. I know somebody 
did that for me, and it was 14 pages, and they've already taken it down. But anyway. Uh, You're not eligible. I'm not eligible, but thank you for all the people that wrote in. I appreciate that. Mike? Uh, Jerry, when uh, you spoke with the mayors in the different communities here about the uh, CARES funding, uh, I am sure you heard some very specific needs that these mayors of these different communities, Gladstone, Liberty, and so forth, um, that the, that they have uh, as a result of the COVID nineteen crisis. What I'm just curious. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are some of the things that you heard uh, in in these Northland communities here in, in Clay County? I I kind of wonder what you know how how they're impacted by this. Well, when I spoke with the the, the mayors and also some of the city council members right. and, and that. It's uh, it's something that uh, I, th- I think we sometimes forget in Clay County, and that is each city is very, very different. Kearney is very different from North Kansas City, which is different from Gladstone. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, the variance was certainly followed along those, those lines as far as the, the density of population, the services provided. But a lot of what they were talking about was the ability to be able to have the supplies needed for their emergency workers, uh, certainly, one of the things that is covered under uh, under this funding is uh, COVID related um, overtime and hazard pay. So, if, uh, if if it is an unbudgeted overtime expense, so there's a lot more overtime being worked because of a number of people not being able to be out there. Um, that it now means that they've got to pay additional overtime they had not budgeted for. So, those are some of the things. Another thing that has really um, also concerned a lot of these mayors, and that is. Uh, as I've mentioned before, the uh, small businesses that they have in their communities, I mean, those are those are where the uh, the action really is when it comes to keeping people employed and mm-hmm. keeping uh, keeping the economy rolling. Yeah, and that's why I think it is so important. We need to start opening back up. We've got to get people into these small businesses. You don't have um, – so the place it, – it, and I know this has been covered, but the places that – uh, you know, the bigger box stores, Target, Home Depot, and all that, they've stayed open, and they're the ones that could take a little bigger of a hit. Now, not huge. I'm not saying close it all up, but the small business owners, um, they've got, I mean, that's their income. That's their whole livelihood. We've got to get people back into those businesses. I will say, um, I do know from from being around Carney and, and a lot of the people that we talk to here at the station, the Carney residents have been very supportive of their local businesses to the degree they can. Now, there's some businesses that, you know, the curbside for the restaurants works kind of. But it's not the same as being in the restaurant. But there's some small businesses, retail, and that sort of thing that just they can't function that way. I mean, you can't. I don't know what's a good get buy a shirt mm-hmm. and call ahead and order it. It just doesn't work that mm-hmm. way. And even still. For those in the restaurant industry, the margin is so small. Um, this curbside thing will play for a while, but it just doesn't work overall. If it did, that's what we would have been doing for years. But uh, hats off to the Carney people for um, supporting the local business as much as you can. That way, that much, that, that said, we've got to get these businesses back open. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And I think the... Um here in Clay County, and uh, to just kind of give you a little orientation, the Clay County Health uh, Centers, Public Health Centers, is uh, has the authority over uh, just Clay County outside of Kansas City. The Kansas City portion of Clay County is under the uh, under the authority of the Jackson County, uh, or excuse me, the Kansas City Health Department. Uh, and I think one of the things that uh, I was very happy about was that our uh, our restrictions are much less, and I think they're much more reasonable because I think there's an understanding that businesses need to be um, businesses need to be supported at this time. Um, by the way, in addition to the mayors, I, I really neglected to mention this, and I need to, and that is that uh, it, within government, the move to, as I say, within county government, the move to be more accountable, uh, I can't say enough good things about the treasurer, Bob Nance, because he's the guy who's going to have to sign off on all these things. He's the one who is, is looking at this and is coming. And he is the one who sees these figures that we're looking at for possible declines. Well, not possible, uh, and almost inevitable declines in our revenues. And then, uh, the other person who's been just great on working through this issue is our auditor, Victor Hurlbert, um, trying to help navigate through some of the more technical parts of this. So uh, I, I don't want this to sound like Jerry's a one-man show uh, over in Clay County. Th- th- those are examples of two of the people, Bob and uh, Victor, who are really out there trying to make sure that this money goes 
where it needs to go as efficiently and quickly as possible in compliance. Yeah, but you know, you talk about a one man show, and I'm not and not saying it is, but I will say um, you have been and you've been on this program a number of times, but you have been out in the community um, for years, um, just harping over and over. And your big thing has been fiscal responsibility over and over and over again. And now, um, and nobody saw this coming, now that is going to be huge because we've got to, I mean, your sales tax revenue is going to go off a cliff. Well, it already has. You just don't know it yet because the the reporting periods aren't completely in. But that is where this is going to pay off enormously and and I got to be honest with you there's the two other commissioners I have never seen them out anywhere and you know I run into you all the time at different um at Mike and I and Brian always run into you at different events, events of, and of, all of that all kinds, and yeah. I've missed you because we haven't been in any lately but um <laughs> you're always out there and you're in the public eye and you're talking about um fiscal responsibility and here's what we're doing and here's why we're doing and now we see why that is so important because um as you guys you were just talking about it and um um what what are you guys i know you and bob and everyone have been talking about um what you're going to do what's the plan kind of going for, forward for, for for the ultimate belt type yeah, yeah because you yeah, got to right. do i mean now number one um and I'm not being paid to say this, but hats off, to, <laughs> seriously, hats off to you for the fiscal responsibility you've taken to this point so that we're not, because I know there are cities, New York, that are in a world of trouble, but it's because they were fiscally irresponsible prior to this. You right. guys weren't. Right. And I say you guys, you weren't, just going to be honest. You have been on top of this from the get-go, and now it pays off. Now, I'm not saying we're not going to tighten our belts a little bit, but at least we're not completely out of the game, you know, or or begging the federal government for help, New York. So what what's some of the belt tightening that you guys are looking at doing? Well, first off, uh, I will get you that donut now. <laughs> <laughs> um, My work is done. <laughs> Donuts for lunch, everybody. <laughs> One of the things that oh, wait a minute, I didn't say everybody. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I've I've asked to have put on the agenda for Monday, uh, as say the 18th coming up, uh, under discussion is let's start talking about where we can start tightening those uh, those expenses. Right. It is important to uh, to to be fiscally responsible during the good times, and we've had some good times lately. That the economy has been clicking along. When we're heading into tough times, which is exactly where we're headed straight to, um, it is. It is darn near life and death. You've got to now. It's not a not an issue of should we be. It's a we have to be. Um, really, it's it's not that different than a family sitting around their their tables thinking, okay, uh, prices have gone up at the grocery store. Uh, we have fewer hours that we're working. How do we make this work? And it's it's the same with the county. And so we need to be looking at things that we need to be considering whether these are are necessary expenses. If you're a family, you're saying, okay, maybe we don't go to the movie, or we don't do this or that. Uh, at the county level, I think we ought to be looking at things like, do we need to have a lobbyist for 84000 a year? Uh, do we need to have uh, the kind of legal muscle that we have? Could we not do a better job um, by having a, a local attorney instead of doing a, a high dollar <clears throat> out, of, uh, out of the uh, county law firm? Uh, so there are a lot of things that we can be talking about as far as how we start tightening that down, and we've got to be looking at it. One of the issues, and I've I mentioned this before, and it isn't an immediate savings, but the uh, proposed new county annex, um, that will be roughly, just that alone will probably be almost a million dollars a year for the next 20 years that we will have to pay out. Can we put that on hold? That's exactly what I would propose for the, for the reason of money savings, but also when you see what businesses are doing, and government isn't a business, but we should run it more like a business. Amen. And what businesses are doing right now is they are being forced to have their workers work remotely. Everybody I've talked to that has any kind of a sizable footprint as far as a building goes are, are thinking in terms of how do we get a hybrid to where maybe someone works two or three days at home and then works in the office, meaning you can share office space, meaning you don't need as much overhead in office. Um, we at the county seem to be going the opposite direction, and that is we are building much more office space than we, than we need, 
Um, and it's just, it, it is just pointless. No, no company in their right mind would be doing what we're doing under these, under the circumstances we are in looking at decreasing revenues and increasing overhead. And we're going to increase the overhead yet more is, is not even close to fiscally responsible. When you talk to uh, the folks at the Clay County Health Department, do mm-hmm. you, uh, and look, realistically, I understand their first objective is to take care of the health of the people living in the county. Uh, but do you get the sense at all that they realize that they, they can still take care of ma- making sure that people are, are safe and, and not ignore the uh, economic impact? Do you, it, it, or can they combine that thinking? They, um, I've, I've talked to Gary, the, the uh, Gary mm-hmm. Zabarak. Uh, he's a good guy. I've talked to him about this uh, uh, to some length. And it's obvious to, to listen to him and to, to hear what his thoughts. He is thinking in terms of, of obviously the, the health and safety of the citizens. But he clearly recognizes that the economic problems that are resulting from the uh, COVID-19 is, issue uh, is taking its toll on the mental health of people. It's taking its toll on the physical health. So he is not blind to that consideration, which I think leads to the more reasonable approach that the Clay County Public Health Service is taking toward business, uh, you know, business limitations. So it's, it's, it's clear to me, my conversations with him, that he is taking that into account and, and Clearly, economics is not his area. Uh, economic development is uh, not understandable, in his, right? Exactly, but but you but it, it is he is certainly aware that there is a public health component to this to the length of this kind of a close down of all these businesses. Right, right. Well, that how refreshing is that though? The the voice of reason. I mean, coming from the health department. He the thing is, I I've I've known him for for quite a while, and like I say, it's. Uh, you know, he's he's focused obviously on the health. That is his area. That is his primary. To- responsibility. Totally get that, right? But, but as the, he should. But the, the idea that that he, that you can sit down and have a reasonable conversation during the during uh, the uh, as this has unfolded, he has hosted a number of uh, uh, of, of forums, uh, you know, meetings with elected officials, and he has been very open to the idea of what is happening, what is what is the impact on the ground. So I've. I've I'm uh, I'm very pleased with with uh, you know his attitude towards this and and his openness. Yeah, and I think uh, just to underscore what Jim had mentioned earlier, I mean we you know at some point you can't uh, do all of the 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 safekeeping of people's you know good health through this crisis at the expense of small businesses and just destroying the economy. And uh, I think that's the frustration that a lot of folks across the nation are having now. I mean when you see these. Uh, large protest in some of the some of the major cities uh, well, across america I, yeah. I think a good point mike is that you can't this isn't a one size fits all and i think jerry you brought it up earlier this every city is different and every geographic area is different so i understand when the when this thing first started uh it, it was an unknown so we didn't know what to do right but now as we're getting more data in more information we're starting to realize Okay, it doesn't affect these people. It doesn't affect these people as much. These people it really affects, so we don't want to do that. But I think uh, we have to, and I think Clay County, as far as I can tell, is is moving in a really good direction. And maybe you can tell me what you guys are looking at specifically, but Clay County's numbers are low, and they've yes. been low every day that I've looked at them. Um and I don't see anything that would would. And I'm not a you know doctor. I don't, I don't even play one on TV. I guess I could say I was, and no one would check. Yeah, somebody would probably say something. But my brother's a doctor. Does that count? But I I don't see anything in the numbers that would indicate that Clay County is at a huge risk of a, a huge explosion. You know, so therefore, let's get going. Let's to what degree? So are you guys looking at that? Consistently, yes. uh, we are, and like I say, it, it's because, and this is sort of a. I'm, I'm glad you brought this up because this is something I don't think people quite understand. But that is the the closings and uh, these restrictions are under the authority of the county health uh, services, not under the the uh, auspices of the uh, county commission. So the idea of being able to reach out and talk to them, I think, is a big deal. And you can also that is also reflected on when you look at how Clay County Health Department has approached these restrictions vis-a-vis some of the other uh, jurisdictions, like, say, Kansas City. Uh, so I, when, when you – and then and there's reaction to the data, because that's another thing that they look at, is what is the data telling us? And 
I think you need to follow where the data takes you. And uh, the data has taken the the, uh, the county health director to the uh, point to where he feels that this is that this less restrictive regime is appropriate for Clay County. And I'm looking forward to him to the to the data supporting uh, uh, to get, getting to the point to where it is even more uh, loosened up. But I think too there we need to get away. This is my personal opinion. We need to get away from this. Government tells us exactly what That's to what do. You about. have to take some personal knowledge of this. And if people look and see, okay, it's very clear this affects older people, older than you. Um, it, it affects, <laughs> Actually, I'm in the demographic. Well, you are a little bit, but it it, it affects older people. Um, so if you're one of the affected people, maybe you shouldn't go out right. for you know and do as much. Maybe you should restrict your contact, but we cannot shut down the whole world because one person might you know be exposed if that person can hold back or not go out. So you know, I know one of the bigger issues is is coming up that we're talking about reopening schools, um, reopening sporting events and that sort of thing. And I think there comes a point where um, more than, you know, the sitting six feet apart or 12 feet apart or whatever, you know, or what is it, 10 feet in Kansas City and whatever the case may be, more than that, if you are in a high-risk group, don't go. Don't go to that football game. You know, or or the yeah, we're, baseball we're, game. We're talking or about com- common sense, yeah. Right, Use and it'd some be the same. Sense. It'd be yeah. the same as if we were having a, a an outbreak of the flu. Right, I would have the same advice for somebody in their eighties who had some health issues. I would say, you probably don't exactly. want to get yeah. out too yeah. much. You know, obviously, they're, they're different diseases, different viruses. But the thing is, the practical matter is, stay safe. I, and I, you can't, I think, but you can't expect everybody. You can't expect everybody to stop. And the government to protect you from everything. Right. So if you're in the, be smart, and and let's get back to let's, work. Let's do it. Right. Right. Well said, Jim. Uh, Jerry Nolte, uh, presiding commissioner of Clay County. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you. If uh, you want to join us next week, and I hope you do, uh, we're going to have the Carney School Board candidates. We've got Bree Schweitzer and Brian Ham going to be on the show with us next week. Both of them, Brian. How exciting is that? We love those guys. And uh, join us then. Thanks so much for being with us, Jerry. On behalf of Jim Dickerson, Brian Watts. Don't forget your comments to uh, to win the Google Nest. Yeah, get yourself on the Facebook Live and recommend somebody for the Google Nest. And uh, it's free. We're giving it away. And, uh, yeah, so so give somebody a gift. I know, maybe for Mother's Day. Too late for that. (laughs) Next year's Mother's Day. Father's Father's Day is coming up. Yeah, there you go. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll see you next week on Carney Live. I'm your host, Mike Davis. We appreciate you.